Hello students, welcome to E-Part Sala. Now we are going to learn about quantitative tests of fibers. The fabrics are made up of different types of fibers like cotton, silk, polyester, nylon, like several other fibers. So fabric is a very important property. The fiber is going to be a place a very important property. So we have to find the quantitative analysis of the fiber. First of all, what is meant by quantitative analysis of fiber? So if you are given a sample of fabric, you have to analyze the fabric the fabric which is made up of fiber which fiber it is going to be made so that we can reproduce the fiber as per the specification for for this we have we have got several number of tests one is called a non technical test and technical test in case of non technical test it may be a burning test and feeling test in case of technical test this may be a chemical test burning test and also solvent test these are the very important parameters we are going to test so that we can identify the fiber based on their um, approaches towards the uh, properties of test for example in the if the cotton fiber is going to be dissolved in um, sulfuric acid it is it, we can confirm the material is made up of cotton in case of silk if the material is going to dissolve in sodium hydroxide we can confirm that the material is made up of sodium hydroxide for, uh, for example it, if the cotton fiber is going to be a burned it, it will have a paper burning smell so from this we can identify that we can have um, we can have uh, which fiber it is made up of so it is very important we have to know the fiber uh, the behavior of the fiber in melting burning chemical chemical solvent etc from this module we can able to find which which fiber which will be dissolved in the chemicals so this module is very helpful for the student to know the quantitative analysis of the fiber after going this lesson the students can identify the fibers using wide range of techniques observe the longitude and cross section of microscopic view of different fibers with their respective unique features understand the different burning characteristics of fiber distinguish between the fiber types using the criterion of solubility in a chemical distinguish fiber on basis of density and melting temperature then what are the range of tests to be done is one is called microscopic examination which gives a longitudinal and cross section view of the fiber second one is burning test in a flame the third one is solubility test in chemical reagent and fourth one is element identification one is density measurement and determination of melting point and peeling test what are the type of uh, textile fiber for test will be there are we can classify into two categories one is called non-technical test another one is called technical test so non-technical test will comprises of peeling test and burning test in case of technical test microscopic test and chemical test so test for the identification will be made up of handle or field test and also visual examination another one is burning test twist on drying flotation test microscopic analysis and chemical analysis now we can go for what are the requirement for test so for the requirement of test how to test will be done will be you have to prepare the test specimen and we require upper called microscopic if you are going for microscopic examination and we need some chemicals or reagents for the chemical test if you are going for solubility test and in case of non technical test like feeling test the feeling test requires perception if it is to be of any value so it requires skilled operator and also experienced operator skilled perception is acquired only after handling many different fab fabrics over a period of time the limitation of this test become apparent when examining and comparing fabric of different fiber entrants and the whole feeling test does not give any quite confident test result so that it is not a confident test so so next time we are going for burning test to recognize the composition of fabric by burning test the sample of fiber or yarn of fabric should be moved slowly towards the small flame the reaction of heat carefully observed one end of the sample should be put directly into the flame to determine its burning rate and characteristics. 
the burning order should be noted and the characteristics of ash such as amount of ash form of ash hardness of the ash and color of the ash should be examined in the case of burning test in the case of technical test there are certain technical tests performed for identifying various fibers these tests require high technology laboratory equipment and are much more reliable than the non technical tests the technical tests require a high skilled personnel and technical know how of handling chemicals and their accurate analysis these tests are very valuable for those fabrics that are blend of different yarns and have also have certain special properties including flame retardancy water absorbency etc so types of technical tests will be microscopic test and chemical test there are two types of tests which can be microscope under microscope and we use chemical for identification of the fiber so under microscopic test microscopic test is a technical test that involves identifying the fabric with help of microscope with the magnification of minimum 100 power the test can easily distinguish between fibers the test identify the natural fibers more easily as compared to man made fiber synthetic fibers are very similar in appearance and the increase in the number of varieties makes it little bit tough to distinguish fiber even under microscope for in case of technical test if it is going to be for natural fiber we can identify the fiber by the longitudinal cross sectional view we can find the fiber easily because in case of cotton the cross section will be of kidney shape so that we can identify easily but in the case of um, synthetic fiber microscopy test doesn't reveal much result because all synthetic fiber will have similar cross section so we we are not able to identify the fiber easily so so we are going for chemical test chemical tests are another technical means of identifying fibers but chemical tests are not intended for, for the general consumers different types of chemical tests are undertaken to establish the identity of the fibers used these tests give accurate and precise analysis The tests are conducted in the research laboratory only. Fiber identification by solvent test. This is another method. For example, if the blend is composed of polyester and cotton, the one component is going to dissolve in one chemical and the other one is identified by remaining residue. For example, solubility of fiber in a particular chemical reagent is a means of identification in case of solvent test. the fiber can be placed in a chemical at a particular temperature and the solubility will confirm the type of fiber for example in a cotton is going to be soluble 75% sulfuric acid in the case of wool and silk 5% sodium hydrochloride or 5% sodium hydroxide at boil will make them dissolve so we can identify the fiber if it is going to dissolve in 5% sodium hydrochloride the material will be wool if it is going to be dissolved in 5% sodium hydroxide at boil the material will be silk we can identify this as a silk material in case of viscose it can be dissolved in 60% sulfuric acid so another in In case of acetate, if the fiber is acetate, it can be dissolved in glacial acetic acid. In case of triacetate material, it can be dissolved in acetone. In case of nylon fabric, nylon material, it can be dissolved in hydrochloric acid or in formic acid. In case of polyester, it can be dissolved in metoxazol or chloroplanol. Acrylic material can be dissolved in dimethyl formaldehyde. So from this, we can identify that the material, if it is a cotton or nylon or polyester, by using different types. of soluble solvent so methods available for characterization fiber structural and physical chemical properties are one we can use optical electron microscopy and elemental end group analysis or infrared spectrography or ultraviolet visible spectrography both are um, different methods to identify the material for example in case of optical electron microscopy it gives the fiber longitudinal and there's a cross cross sectional view in case of elemental end group analysis it gives the fiber end group which which component will have for example cooh or oh group infrared microscopy will give valuable root the determination of functional group within a fiber which are which are the functional group present in the fiber ultraviolet visible spectrography will give an idea of electronic transition occurring during the heating this will give the unsaturated groups which will be in the excited mod- module there are some other methods available 
நியூக்ளியர் மேக்னட்டிக் ரிசோனன்ஸ் மைக்ரோ பெக்ட்ரோகிராஃபி இட் வில் ஹவ் என்எம்ஆர் இட் வில் கிவ் த ஹை இன்டென்சிட்டி மேக்னட்டிக் ஃபீல்ட் ஸோ தட் த ஓரியன்டேஷன் ஆஃப் தி மாலிக்யூல் இன்சைட் த ஃபைபர் கேன் பி டிட்டர்மின் அண்ட் எனதர் டெக்னிக் இஸ் கால் எக்ஸ்ரே டிஃப்ராக்ஷன் இட் வில் கேவ் கிவ் த கிறிஸ்டலின் அமாசஸ் ரீஜன் இன் த ஃபைபர் தெர்மல் அனாலிசிஸ் இட்ஸ் ஆல்சோ டன் ஃபார் ஃபிசிக்கல் கெமிக்கல் சேஞ்சஸ் இன் ஃபைபர் ட்யூரிங் த ஃபைபர் அனாலிசிஸ் டெஸ்ட் தென் ஆல்சோ மாலிக்குலர் வெயிட் டிட்டர்மினேஷன் வில் கிவ் தி சைஸ் அண்ட் வெயிட் ஆஃப் தி ஃபைபர் மாலிக்யூல்ஸ் தென் ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் கிராவிட்டி test is also measured to density of the fiber which can be give the density of the fiber then microscopic test reveals the microscopic features of the fiber when observed along the length and surface feature can be revealed cotton fiber the longitudinal cross section will be flat irregular convoluted ribbons under microscope in the case of cross section of the cotton fiber it is a peanut or bean shaped with lumen running along through the length in case of wool if if it is observed in the microscope it have rough surface with scales protruding out in the case of cross section of wool under microscope it is nearly round medulla present in the coarse fiber it is concentric and irregular in size in the case of silk fiber it is very smooth in distinct lengthwise in the longitudinal cross section and in the cross section idea mostly triangular cross section in the case of viscous rayon it is a serrated smooth cross section in the longitudinal view and in the case of irregular serrated cross section in the cross sectional view in the case of nylon polyester and polypropylene it is smooth rod like structure in the longitudinal section and in the cross section it is regular and round in the case of acrylic it is a flat irregular striations in the longitudinal view in the case of cross sectional view the acrylic will look like a irregular dark bone shape like structure so we can identify the fiber by using microscopic view also in the case of burning test the fiber being chemically different so different burning characteristics can be used to identify them the burning test is a relatively simple test as all needed in a, is a flame the sol so we can make observation when approaching the flame on the burning behavior inside the flame during the removal of the flame relating to smell emitter and the residue of ash for example for a cellular fiber approaching the flame it do not shrink in the flame burn readily without melting behavior outside the flame continue to burn after glow smell of cellulose fiber when burning especially cotton and viscose will have burning of hair human hair residue will be small amount of light gray ash in the case of wool and silk when approached to the flame it will curl away when it is in the flame burn slowly sputter like anything behavior outside the flame will be self extinguishing it will it will extinguish self no need of change this extinguish the fiber and smell will be the same as that of cotton that is burning like hair easily in the case of residue the ash will be easily crushable and black bead like the thing in case of polyester even approach to the flame it shrinks away from the flame in the flame when it is in the flame melts and burns slowly drips when the behavior outside the flame burns drips may extinguish because of dripping smell sweet smell of ester residue will be hard tough gray bead in the case of nylon the same as that of polyester it will have but in the residue will be hard tough light color in the case of acrylic the residue will be irregular hard black bead like a polyester so we can identify the fiber during burning then in the case of soluble test there are seven steps available in the case of the fiber is unknown fiber if you are given unknown fiber there are seven steps first step treat the fiber sample with 0.2 2.5 sodium hydrochloride solution if the fiber soluble they may be wool or silk to distinguish between the two whether it is wool or silk treat the fiber in cold 70% sulfuric acid if soluble it is it can confirm it is silk otherwise or wool alternatively the test the fiber of sulfur which present in the wool if the fiber is insoluble in sodium hypochlorite go to step number 2 in the step number 2 treat the fiber with cold acidic or glacial acidic acid if the fiber is soluble the fiber could be cellulose or 
diacetate or cellulose triacetate. To distinguish between the two, treat the fiber with methylene chloride. If soluble, it is cellulose triacetate. If it is not cellulose diacetate, if the fiber is insoluble, go to step number 3. In step number 3, treat the fiber with cold formic acid. If soluble, the fiber is nylon 6 or nylon 6. To distinguish between the nylon 66 and nylon 66, treat the fiber with boiling dimethyl formaldehyde, usually denoted as DMF. If the fiber is soluble, it is nylon 66, otherwise, it is nylon 66. So, in case of if the fiber is soluble in dimethyl formaldehyde, the fiber is nylon 6. Alternately, determine the melting points. If you have a doubt, go for melting point. Nylon 6 melts at 218 degrees centigrade. Nylon 66 melts at 265 degrees centigrade. If the fiber is insoluble in DMF, go to step number 4. Still, we are, we are in the case, we are not able to find the, it is not wool, it is not silk, it is not um, nylon or nylon 66, or nylon 6. We are going for nylon. So, next is step number 4. Treat the fiber in cold DMF. If it is soluble, it is acrylic fiber. If it is insoluble, go to step number 5. In the case of step number 5, boil the sample in chloroprenol. If soluble, it is polyethylene therapy, that is polyester. If the sample is soluble in chloroprenol, it is a polyester fiber. If it is insoluble, again go to step number 6. Treat the fiber with 70% sulfuric acid. If soluble, it could be cotton or viscose rayon. To distinguish between the two, treat them with sodium zincate. If soluble, it is viscose rayon. If insoluble, in step number 6, go to step number 7. Step number 7, put the sample in water. If it floats, could be polypropylene, that is PP, or polyethylene. PP is soluble in boiling carbon tetrachloride. PP is soluble in uh, boiling xenol. So, in the 7 tests, we are going to identify whether the fiber is going to be a silk or wool. Go for second test. Going to be for soluble test. For additional test, we can go for. If you have a doubt, nylon 66 and nylon 6 we can confirm in formic acid 85% or M crystal solution. If it is a cellulose tri state, it can be soluble in chloroform or methylene dichloride. If it is wool fiber, it is soluble in 5% sodium hydroxide at room temperature. In case of silk, it can be soluble in 5% sodium hydroxide hot solution. In case of viscose rayon, it dissolves in sodium zincate solution. In case of polyester fiber, it dissolves in orthochloroplenol at room temperature. These are the sum of the additional confirmation test we can made for nylon 66, nylon 6, cellulose triacetate, wool silk and viscose rayon. So, another measurement is called a density measurement. The definition of density derived from the relationship between volume into density is equal to mass. That is, the density is the mass per unit volume of a substance and it, its units in grams per centimeter cube. It can be accurately measured using density gradient column. We can use a uh, equipment called density gradient column to measure the density of the fabric, the density of the fiber. The fiber density is being given like this. The cotton will have 1.52 to 1.55 grams of centimeter cube of density. In case of viscose rayon, 1.49 to 1.52 density will be having. If the material has got 1.53 to 1.55 density, the material will be linen. In the case of jute, it will have a density of 1.49 to 1.5 grams per centimeter cube. In the case of silk, it, the density will vary from 1.25 to 1.34 grams per centimeter cube. In the case of nylon 6 or nylon 66, the density will be vary, will be 1.14 grams per centimeter cube. In the case of polyethylene, it will be 0 0.92 to 0.94. In the case of glass fiber, it will be 2.54 to 2.54 grams per centimeter cube. In the case of polyester, it will be 1.38 to 1.4 grams per centimeter cube. By using density gradient column, we can measure the density of the fiber and by referring this table, we can roughly came into the idea whether the fiber is cotton or viscose rayon or polyester or silk or wool.
then the another test will be the melting point determination of the melting point of the fiber the melting temperature of the fiber can be accurately determined with the help of differential calorimeter cotton will be decomposed around 250 degrees centigrade before softening or melting if the fiber is wool it will decompose around 220 degree centigrade in the case of silk fiber it decomposes at around 280 degree centigrade before it melts man made fiber if I, in the case of man made fibers if it is viscous rayon fiber it decomposes before softening or melting in the case of polyester it decomposes around 265 degree centigrade in the case of nylon 6 the melting temperature will be 218 degree centigrade in the case of nylon 66 it will be around 265 degree centigrade in the case of acrylic fiber it may be uh, the melting point will be 320 degree centigrade may it may decompose before melting in the case of polypropylene the melting temperature will be 165 degree centigrade in case of polyethylene in case of uh, of low density polyethylene the melting temperature will be 115 degree centigrade and in the case of polyethylene high density polyethylene the melting temperature will be 150 degree centigrade so we can identify the blend composition by using uh, longitudinal view or microscopic test burning test um, uh, melting point test and also solvent test so one can able to identify the fiber by any one of the method if it is the unknown fiber we can go for the seventh step which is which can be step by step we can eliminate the possibility of the fiber which is going to dissolve in the solvent for that we can find this by the seven step method we can identify the fibers of wool silk cotton viscose nylon polyester polypropylene polyethylene fiber by using the quantitative analysis method so after learning this module the student then identify we the fibers of the category which is a man made fiber or natural fiber depending on the fiber which test has to be done and which which solvent to be used to identify the fiber which method is used to identify the fiber to confirm the presence of the fiber in the fabric we can use the micro how to use the microscopic test how to use the the um, calorimetric uh, calorimetric test to de- test the density of the fiber and also extra diffraction methods to identify the fiber in a definite manner and also burning test and also uh, the soluble test so we can identify the fiber by cross section longitudinal view and also burning test this will help the students to learn about their quantitative analysis which will help the reproduction of the fabric according to the sample